once again, our first question to our Federalist candidate. The Federalist Party seeks to provide state funding for anti-drug programs to resolve the opioid crisis. What do you feel is the best and most cost-effective way to combat the crisis and its ill effects? So as we see this uh, crisis growing across the street extremely at high rates, we obviously we need to put a stop to it. And what first comes to some people's mind is obviously for the people that are already addicted and they want to go through rehab, put money into the rehab system. But that won't work because once they get out that rehab system, they're just going to go straight back into the drug, the communities that have all the opioid problems. So my, my goal is to be able to put more state funding towards the community programs that will go directly into these high rates, high rated areas with opiates, which it's a lot of the state. So we're going to need a lot of funding, but we're going to get the job done because we're going to go straight to the community at the source of the problem instead of getting it where addicts are already going through the problem. So. The only thing that's going to fix the opioid problem in this state is job opportunity. So I think we need to focus the funding on uh, the legislation on cutting taxes, income tax, bringing businesses back to West Virginia, and creating job, job opportunity for all of our great citizens. Um, I believe it goes without saying that it, it is a problem unemployment these days, but at the same time, West Virginia has many opportunities out there already. And I think that people are just, we have a lot of people on welfare, and that's not, it shouldn't be that way. A lot of people that aren't employed should get employed. And I think the business is already out there, but it's just that they don't want to work. So I think we need to go into communities to have these programs to be able to talk about stuff like that. Question for our Nationalist candidate. The Nationalist Party platform seeks to implement performance-based pay for educators. In an educational environment that is filled with the social problems that have been caused by poverty, addiction, and other major disruption, disruptive facets that are facing teachers in the classroom every day, how can you fairly hold a teacher to a standard of a student performance that can impact their livelihood when teachers have zero control over the emotional and familial stressors that the children arrive in their classroom with day in and day out. Let me ask you a question. Last year, did you guys like going to school late into the summer because of the teacher strike? No, no absolutely not. And that, that's what happens when you have a, a standardized pay system in, in this state. The teacher needs to be held responsible for educating us. And that can be on a competition standard. Uh, tests at the beginning of the class and tests at the end of the class. Standardized curriculums. Because we want our teachers to be held to the same responsibility that they hold us to. <laughs> There needs to be a change in the school system, and I think we all know that, but where the change is not is with these post and pre-tests based on testing based and like the teacher salary based on that. That would not work because if the students all have different responsibilities, we all come from different backgrounds. I don't know, some of you guys might play sports. You guys might be out until 6.30 every night playing sports. Once you get home from a sport team, you might have to pay, for, you might have to get a job so you can help your parents pay for something. And we're all in different situations, and you can't put that on the teacher, that if these people they just can't spend time for school, or some people just won't try, you can't put that on the teacher. So I say instead, making a base salary increase for all teachers across the state, because that's what really needs to be done. As the base salary increases and the years go on, people as humans are always going to want more. 
So while the pre-test and the post-test might not be the best option, that is why we listen to people like you guys. We want to hear your creative spirit. And we want to find the best way that we can have competitive base pay like they do in other states, like Florida. Great education system, and we want to be the, the greatest state in terms of education. It's just as simple as that. The Federalist Party hinges its secondary road repair platform plank to a funding source that is not in accord with federal law. If your party's effort to legalize marijuana fails, your party is left with few priorities. What do you plan to do, if elected governor, to ensure you engage the citizens in the legislative process necessary to deliver on your campaign promises? Well, there's been a, there's been a problem with not voting, and that's been town, town, told in other questions. So my goal as uh, being elected electee position for governor, I would try to increase voter participation across all people. And I would try to put these community outreach programs that also promote these normal life functions like voting and democracy and increasing participation within your government. Because without that, the government's not gonna change in West Virginia and there, there will be no change. And that's up to us, all of us, to do that for the whole state. That's a, that's a very good idea. But in terms of marijuana, medical marijuana, I'm completely for. It helps people everywhere. Recreational marijuana, I'm not saying I'm against because the tax, the tax purposes and the revenue increase is actually very good. However, the long-term studies are not conclusive yet. So I think we should focus on informing legislation to put more funding uh, into, in, into these studies so that we can know if the, if the marijuana is safe for our citizens or not. I believe these studies aren't even happening in our state, so why would we put money into these studies that aren't even going back into our economy? We're trying to fix our state, and that's what comes first. And without that, there's no point in trying to fix our state. It's not going to happen. So legalize, legalizing marijuana is going to be a hard process, but in the end, the tax revenue is going to work out for everything. We're going to have a new source of money for simple stuff like secondary road infrastructure. Question for the Nationalist candidate. Since the war on terror started after 9-11, hundreds of thousands of Americans have gone to fight abroad to stem the rise of terrorism and prevent terrorist attacks against American interests abroad. This long and arduous war against terror has left tens of thousands with unseen battle scars caused by the psychological effects of life in an active war zone, emotional distress, PTSD, and other debilitating impacts have paralyzed many of the veterans and are disabled as a result. Your party seeks to hire veterans to protect schools. Is it wise to place those with wartime service-induced instability into our schools? I don't think it's fair to say that all veterans have battle scars like PTSD and they're not safe around children. I pride our veterans in, this, you know, in the United States for fighting for our country. Yes, sir. That, that being said, there are some that need psychological help. However, there are also many unemployed veterans who do not have this problem. And we're spending a lot of money on law enforcement officers in our school systems who have jobs as law enforcement officers. If we employ some of these veterans, it would be advantageous to everybody. <laughs> Uh, 
this would work, but I think the only way this would work is that we need all veterans that want to do this go through a mental a, a screening of some sort, and also we would need them to go through the police resource officer training. It's not fair just to put someone in a position just because of the, the action they did were very heroic for our country and for our nation, and that is greatly appreciated by all of us. But it's not fair to put them in a position like that without proper training, and it's not safe for the school. Like I said, for some of them it may not be safe, but there's also a lot of unemployed veterans. And we need to get them jobs. That's our first priority. And there's a lot of veterans in West Virginia. And we take care of our West Virginians. Question for our Federalist candidate. The Federalist Party platform seeks to provide job training through the transition to renewable re energy resources. How can you fund training programs when your platform to transition to renewable energy will reduce the overall income in the state from gas, oil, and coal severance taxes? I think we'll be able to split the money from the legalization of marijuana to make this possible. And not only will, the, the, obviously we all know coal and all that is not going to be here forever. So we have to make a change. And the only way by doing that is introducing re renewable sources. And we actually have a lot of wind farms already across the state. And I'm proud to say that because we could have more of those. And that could create a balance and a stability to the already booming. And like, it's, it's, not, it's a very unstable business of non-renewable resources. So I think this would be a stable al alternative to that. The problem I have with acting like marijuana is the only source of income for West Virginia really upsets me because there's a lot of investment vehicles that would work in these financial literacy. We learn about that. Say you float a bond. We get a lot of notor notoriety from a, from a big state. New York City floats a bond for us, a big Wall Street bank. A lot of notoriety, maybe bring some people to West Virginia. And, and hopefully, we can, we can eventually go to these renewable resources. But right now, they're very, very expensive. So we need to find a way that we can implement renewable resources and, and, and create jobs like we do in coal and create a revenue stream like we have in coal. We have great scientists in West Virginia. And I think those scientists, if allocated more funding through, the, through this bond, can uh, find renewable resources if they, if they really try their hardest, along with um, help from all, all across the United States. I don't think it would be a good idea to take people from out of the state and bring them in to fix a problem. Because that's why, that's the whole reason we're trying to create a whole new economy. And we want to do that, not a whole new, but add on to an extremely century moving economy. And we want that for everybody. And that's not going to be working with by getting people from out of state. So we get this people from in state. And we've reached our final question. For our nationalist candidate, if elected governor, how will you prioritize the needs of the state for further infrastructure development? Will you prioritize existing infrastructure or, you will, seek, or will you seek to develop new infrastructure projects to move the economy forward? I think we can go with that same idea on the bond. We're not necessarily bringing other people in to fix our problems. It's the same thing when I was talking about in my speech with Little Rock. They already allocate bonds. That company that I was talking about already has bonds for West Virginia. The Charles Point in Harrison County, that company runs the debt-backed security for that place. So, I think that 
we, we, if we issue those bonds and we create new infrastructure to bring the economy forward, we can have a lot of opportunities for our, our fellow West Virginians. You would not be able to create new infrastructure if you're doing infrastructure by population because if you have these towns that are growing, they're not going to get as much money because you guys are trying to base it off population. So I would say base um, infrastructure off town development and resources in that town because we want to grow West Virginia. We don't want to just keep it the way it is now. That's the whole reason we're trying to change it. We're trying to make it great again. And the only way by doing that is increasing infrastructure for all towns. I think if we create job opportunities through the ways that I, I talked about previously, those, our towns in West Virginia are going to grow substantially, and with that will come increased funding from these new, these new businesses. So I think if we have these new businesses and we have this increased funding, I think our new infrastructure and our new roads will be better for everybody. How do they do, guys? We have about three minutes remaining here, so each candidate will have one. everybody for giving me an opportunity to speak and I just really want to tell you if you elect me governor I will listen to you and through your creativity we will enact change in West Virginia and lastly Carson great job buddy whoever wins I'll be happy with Sandra, obviously that goes without saying. Same to you, man. Same to you. Good job. Good job. So, my job as governor is to reunite us because we have been separated for the past couple days and we have some differing beliefs. So, I, I think that's great because without differing beliefs, we wouldn't get it, like, we would only get the problems that we think are done. But we want everybody's ideas on all these problems. So, I will be listening to all of you and I hope you vote Big Man Carson Winky. Go crazy! Go stupid!